to attract the kind of people that can actually write the check, you got to find them. And then you got to be attractive enough, have something going on enough for those kind of people to sit in your ministry. Why do you feel we as preachers, we as ministers, or the church, we struggle to have what you were creating here, the embassy. Why do we struggle with real commerce or real business in terms of building something that's going to outlive us? Because the word of God does say a man leaves an inheritance for his well, children, see, children, yeah. children. Yeah, so, on. so, but we get so comfortable in just wanting okay, to do a fish fry or have a car wash. And those things are great. Those mm -hmm. things are nice. But some, one of us got to be able to be able to stroke a check, mm -hmm. a real check, to send little Johnny, little Sally to school. One of us need to be able to finance real work instead of me telling you to send me $10 to my cash app every other day. <laughs> Why do we struggle send with that, Bishop? Um... Depends on the context, because we are dealing with a wide audience that is watching us. Yes. Depends on the, the context. Certain contexts, certain uh, demographics, they get it. They've been doing it. They do it. Um, and they, they do it well. They do it well, and they're inculcated in that culture. Um, I was sharing with, uh, I have several friends who have wherewithal, and I try to, you know, spend enough time with them to listen. And But one thing uh, in our conversations I always ask them, show the how. If you've never, when we talk about men and women raising men and, you know, healthy families, we always, there's always the mantra of if someone's never seen it, they're just making up what it's supposed to look like. I hear wives complain about husbands all the time. And most times men are just trying to figure it out. If you've never seen the model in your home, you're just trying to figure it out. You're just doing the best you can. So I come full circle back to your question in regards to why don't we? I think most people are just doing what they know to do. If this is the model of church that I've seen, then I'm going to do this unless I'm bold enough to do something different. But then doing something different doesn't always work immediately. And so if I don't have a model, if I don't have a blueprint, most of us weren't given blueprints on how to do ministry. Wasn't given blueprints on how to do church. Wasn't given blueprints. We were just mimicking what we've seen and then complaining about what we didn't like and now mm. trying to do the opposite of that. Um, so when it comes down, so you take that, then you take people just being people. If I'm still working a job and I've been working this job, it's hard for me to understand what it is to build wealth because you can't build wealth on a on, job. On the job. Mm -hmm. But if nobody's ever told me that and then showed me how to take my idea and go from nothing, work it, go through the dip where I've got more coming out than I got coming in, stick it out to where a place where it's getting traction and building, then I can't bring that acumen, that skill set, that knowledge base into any other setting because I don't know. I'm just doing the best I can. And most preachers, most pastors, most leaders, spiritual leaders in our context that I know of have been working jobs or have been just doing church, just doing what they know to do. So to do it different represents a whole nother thinking because the pressures of pastoring, and you get this, the pressure of pastoring, preaching is only like 20, 25%. The rest is people, mm. people issues. Peace. So if I have that stress, it's hard for me to think beyond because I'm just trying to make sure I survive. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to make sure that do we, do we have a place to have worship? Do we have a place to assemble? It, who's a musician this week? Like, are they going to stay the whole service? You know, and those things may seem trivial, but to someone who's just trying to build, and that's the only way you know to build, that's real stuff. That's real stuff. Yeah, so to, to think past the chicken fry, I'm just trying to make sure we keep the lights on. So yeah. the chicken fry, get, you know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's a, it's a knowledge base. It's an acumen. And here's the last thing, and I'll move on because I don't want to bore you, but I love you. Um to attract the kind of people that can actually write the check, you got to find them. And then you got to be attractive enough, have something going on enough for those kind of people to sit in your ministry. 
if you can't attract those kind of people to sit in your ministry, then you will always be talking about the by and by. Oh, some glad morning, when this life is over, I will always talk about the by and by because I don't have anybody right now because I can't attract anybody like that right now because I don't have the acumen to attract them. And if they did come, do I have enough vision? Do I have enough insight? Do I have enough attractive things to make them stay? That's the difficulty. That's good. That's good. You answered my question. You answered. Oh, you answered it. You answered man. It. But but here's the thing. I think I thought I was I thought I was home free. <laughs> I think a lot of times. So I heard a pastor just recently say. He said I went from a fourteen hundred dollar light bill to a fourteen thousand dollar. You asked me. You're telling me. And he says people see the people coming in. They see now we got this new building. But we now have a $14,000 utility bill. So I understand now, he says, I'm here preaching on Sunday. I'm on the road Tuesday through Friday doing other endeavors just so I can bring something back, back to the house. To, to help that $14,000. To help the $14,000 life. And then somebody's still going to say, we need a full-time pastor. We need... So, so people... It's never going to be enough sometimes. Ever. You know, because even in the entrepreneurial space, we're seeing more pastors now stepping from beyond the pulpit in their building systems. We have to. To attract a different clientele. Yeah. I heard one pastor say, won't call his name. He says, I love my church every Sunday, every Wednesday. He says, but when Pepsi called me to speak, it's a different ball game. When Apple called me to speak for them, it's a different ball game. So, people, and I even hear people in the church say, well, is he a preacher or is he a motivational speaker? But his gift, going back to what you said earlier, it works in both places. Yeah. 